So my name is Michael Chang. Uh, right now we are at the University of California, Los Angeles, and we are in the uh, lab of the UCLA iGEM team. And uh, at UCLA iGEM here, we're working on biomaterials. So we're trying to work with a lot of the materials that nature has already created, and we're using a lot of the understanding of the principles behind what gives these materials their properties, you know, the physics and the chemistry, that sort of stuff. When we're using these principles to design and improve uh, these materials that nature has already provided for us. Uh, I'm from Diamond Bar. It's a little suburb east of Los Angeles. Uh, as I was growing up, I was involved in classes, learning about science and mathematics and things like that, but also in orchestra. Uh, so music was a big part of my life as well. So uh, both of my parents grew up in rural China. So uh, you know, they, they came from families of farmers and uh, you know, they worked their way up to becoming doctors, uh, physicians um, in China. And then they decided that uh, they wanted a better life for themselves and their family, so they decided to immigrate to the United States. Um, of course, here there was a very big language barrier uh, that prevented them from practicing the way that they would like. So my father instead um, decided to uh, start his own acupuncture practice, because that's what he studied as well in China. Um, and my mother, uh, she got licensed in respiratory therapy, and so she works in a hospital, um, you know, treating pulmonary illnesses and things like that. Yeah. I'm a scientist because as a scientist we get to create and innovate um, incredibly awesome new things. Um, it always seems really magical, right? You go into the doctor's office or you know you go into an acupuncturist's office or you know you see a nurse and they have these things to give you. They have either you know medicine to give you or specific treatments and then you know you feel better after a while and like why does that happen? You know it, it, it seems all really magical but at the core of it is science. That's something that my parents really taught me early on and um, that's what really brought my interest in science. There's different types of scientists, right? So there's a type of scientist who like to discover new things. Um, and then there's also the type of scientists, I guess you would probably call them more engineers, uh, that like to take uh, what other people have discovered, you know, these, these understandings and really apply them to create new things, you know, to fix things, to tackle problems. And, uh, and I, I really like science because it provides a really good framework for creating all these fantastic new materials that you know, would otherwise just be science fiction, but uh, we're bringing them to life. You know, for thousands of years, people have been using silk primarily for clothing and for sutures, things like that. Now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to genetically alter the silk and give it extra properties. My specific purpose in the lab is to take all of the other you know, silk proteins that are produced by the other members of my team and to produce them into actual tangible fibers. So one of the pieces of equipment that I use is a syringe pump. Uh, you know, this is a really common piece of equipment that you might see anywhere in a hospital. They're typically used for you know, uh, pumping fluids into patients, but uh, we're using it actually to spin silk fibers. So you know, we draw up a kind syringe of full of silk and then we put it inside of the syringe pump and the syringe pump pushes the silk out through a very thin again. tubing. Yeah. Um, as it's going through it, the walls, uh, you know, they exert what's called a shear force on the silk that causes the silk to kind of align and form, uh, form a liquid into a solid. And as it comes out, um, you know, it turns into a, a thread that you can take and you can stretch and you can spool around. So uh, one of the main issues that we're trying to tackle is adding on uh, what are called binding domains. So we're giving the silk the ability to bind to other molecules and these molecules could be drugs, it could be growth factors, all sorts of useful things that once you spin the silk into a thread, you, know, you might imagine using it as a suture, uh, you know, like an enhanced suture that uh, is able to help the patient recover faster. There's so much collaboration going on, so much cooperation going on. You really can't escape it in today's scientific environment. You know, any kind of, um, any kind of endeavor, any kind of project is going to require uh, the teamwork of a lot of different people. And there's, so there's constant back and forth with communication. Um, and so I, I would say the lab is probably, uh, is not a place where you can be alone. <laughs> uh, my hope is one day, you know, uh, there will be a variety of these different types of silks available for doctors to use. You know, for example, you might oh imagine that you need a specific bandage or wound dressing for a burn victim versus a specific bandage or, you know, dressing for someone who's been, uh, you know, burned by acid or something like that. Any types of injuries, you know, they all require specific, unique treatments. And I really hope that one day, you know, um, we'll be able to create silks that have these different properties or these different drugs or growth factors attached to them that'll allow for, uh, you know, the patients to recover better in these uh, different unique scenarios.